Buenos días, bienvenidos al Webex del día de hoy. Espero todos eh, nos puedan escuchar. Mi nombre es Pablo López. El día de hoy vamos a ver el tema Ahorre tiempo y costos administrando políticas de seguridad de TI. La agenda que vamos a tener el día de hoy es la siguiente. Primero vamos a hablar un poco de nosotros para que nos conozcan un poco más. Después vamos a entrar al tema de este WebEx y por último vamos a tener una sección de preguntas y respuestas. Por favor, si tuvieran alguna pregunta durante la sesión, utilicen el área del chat. Aparecemos dos usuarios como Lopper International, los dos nos pueden hacer llegar las preguntas y al final vamos a utilizar esta sección para responder a las mismas. Nosotros somos una empresa de consultoría que tenemos más de 20 años de experiencia en Latinoamérica y Europa. Hemos implementado soluciones que apoyan siempre las mejores prácticas como son ITIL, ISO 27002 y COVID. El modelo de negocio que utilizamos es el siguiente. En base a la experiencia y la tecnología existente, hemos desarrollado diferentes metodologías que nos permiten ofrecerles soluciones de software, así como servicios de consultoría y actualización tecnológica siempre basándonos en las mejores prácticas y siempre enfocados a los objetivos de su negocio. Llevamos eh, diferentes líneas de negocio, que son, primero, el, el área de eh, seguridad de la información, donde lo que nos interesa es que ustedes tengan un control sobre lo que está sucediendo con su información, quién está accediendo, en qué, en qué momento se está eh, modificando la información, si alguien está quizás teniendo un, un comportamiento por ahí eh, que pueda parecer sospechoso, quizás están intentando modificar un archivo importante en un horario eh, no, que no es de trabajo o desde una computadora que no está autorizada, puede usted recibir alertas en tiempo real que le permitan eh, tomar una acción so sobre esto y así obviamente poder evitar ese acceso. Incluso se puede configurar para que si se realiza una modificación, se envíe una notificación, obviamente se va a revertir lo, lo que se haya hecho y se va a avisar por el mismo correo qué es lo que se tenía en, en ese campo y qué es lo que se, se había modificado. También, si ustedes eh, necesitan encriptar información, podemos a, ayudarlos a que intercambien esta información de manera encriptada, ya sea a través del correo electrónico, por FTP o FTP seguro, también utilizando lo que es una nube privada este, virtual o incluso a través de las carpetas compartidas que todos usamos día a día. En el área de monitoreo de infraestructura y servicios de TI, nos interesa que usted pueda monitorear todos sus servicios de TI y la infraestructura que está asociada a este, de manera tal que si usted quiere monitorear cómo están sus ventas, si hay alguna situación con sus facturas o quizás en algún proceso de inventario, usted lo, lo puede ver en, en tiempo real y puede estar recibiendo alertas en caso de que algo ocurra. Así, usted puede tomar acciones en, en el momento que permitan que el negocio siga funcionando y que no tengan alguna afectación. Puede saber exactamente dónde está esta afectación y qué es todo lo, lo que los servicios que puedan estar afectándose. Incluso si usted detectara que tiene algún cuello de botella, nosotros le podemos ayudar a que sepa exactamente qué usuarios están ocasionando este cuello de botella, qué equipos están eh, quizás en ese momento realizando mucho FTP o están utilizando eh, mucha navegación y que obviamente pueda usted tomar acciones con las alertas que se envían para que pueda evitar cualquier contratiempo en, su, en sus diferentes procesos. En el área de control de cambios nos interesa que pueda eh, tener un control sobre todo el ciclo de desarrollo de software. Desde el momento en el que el usuario está haciendo una petición, ya sea que están solicitando un cambio, quizás están solicitando alguna, alguna mejora o alguna corrección. Eh, obviamente pasando por lo que es la asignación a los diferentes desarrolladores y eh, todos los cambios que ellos vayan a hacer, podemos hacer este control de, de esos cambios que están haciendo, las pruebas que se realizan en todos los ambientes que, que se han eh, determinado, y por supuesto lo que es la implementación en todas las plataformas con las que ustedes cuenten. En la parte de Performance and Capacity Planning, lo que nosotros podemos ayudarles es que ustedes vean en el día a día cómo se están comportando sus servidores, que sepan exactamente qué está ocurriendo con ellos cuando se está quizás corriendo el cierre diario 
o cuando se está cargando los inventarios, si tienen por ahí eh, un aumento en, en las ventas en, en algún momento en el día, ustedes pueden ver exactamente qué está eh, ocurriendo, o quizás hay muchos nuevos ingresos de, de clientes y también quieren saber cómo se están comportando sus servidores. Todo eso nosotros se los podemos ayudar a que ustedes lo vean en, en información clara y precisa, y con esta misma información podemos hacer una proyección. ¿Qué ocurre si ustedes tienen un aumento en las operaciones? Con ese aumento de las operaciones, el servidor les va a soportar lo, lo que ustedes este, van, van a aumentar. Nosotros podemos decirles exactamente cómo se va a comportar su, su servidor en, eh, con ese aumento de operaciones. Si fuera necesario eh, cambiarle algo al servidor, les vamos a decir que se tiene que cambiar o incluso si fuera necesario cambiar el servidor, les vamos a decir exactamente qué modelo es el que, el que deben de ustedes adquirir. En, la, en lo que es la automatización de tareas y procesos de TI, nos interesa automatizar cualquier flujo de trabajo que ustedes tengan, independiente de la plataforma en la que se trate. Esto puede ser algún proceso Windows, en, en los servidores Power, Linux, este, Windows, y obviamente tenemos muchos procesos que interactúan muchas veces entre ellos y dependemos de que la gente esté disponible para, para que se puedan ir eh, trabajando, para que puedan ir fluyendo. Nosotros podemos automatizar este proceso. Si, por ejemplo, ustedes reciben un correo electrónico de recursos humanos pidiendo un alta de usuarios en las diferentes plataformas, podemos ayudarlos a que se lea este correo electrónico. Con esta información se puede realizar una alta en el Active Directory. También podemos hacer asignar lo que son las características del usuario en cuanto a Exchange y por supuesto crear los espacios que necesite en SharePoint. Incluso podemos después llevar esa misma información hacia los servidores Linux y crear los usuarios que, que puedan estar eh, eh, neces necesitando este usuario y también lo mismo podemos hacer con los servidores Power. Podemos hacer diferentes automatizaciones, incluso lecturas de archivos de Excel para leer, le, eh, llenar el inventario de su compañía, también podemos, podemos eh, automatizar cualquier eh, tipo de, de proceso como un cierre diario o incluso lo, lo que ustedes puedan necesitar puede ser automatizado y por supuesto con esto van a optimizar los tiempos de su área. Durante estos 20 años hemos trabajado con diferentes clientes y aquí algunos de ellos. También tenemos sólidas alianzas con empresas que nos permiten ofrecerles software de vanguardia y, por supuesto, lo que son las mejores soluciones y los servicios especializados. Con el WebEx de hoy tenemos la participación de Health Systems y tenemos como invitada especial a Carol, quien es vicepresidente de Servicios Globales de Seguridad. Hello, Carol, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Okay, that's perfect. Well, uh, Carol, uh, we are going to give you the control, so please proceed with the WebEx. All right. Um, I'm going to get out of this screen here yeah. and show these slides. Can you see that? Can you see my screen still? Mm, I think no. No. All right. Let's see. I think I need to maybe share my screen. Okay. Uh, well, I think your presentation is here. Okay. Yes, you are. Does that work? Yes, that works. Okay. Well, thank you for this invitation today to be able to talk about PolicyMinder. So I just thought I would show a couple slides before I showed you the actual products so that I could explain to you what these products actually do. So the idea of PolicyMinder is to save you time. And it does that by allowing you to define what we call policies. Now a policy is how you want your system to be set. And so that might be through global settings on Linux or AIX or system values on IBM I. It might be through user settings, so maybe you have very strict controls about how users should be configured or maybe you have strict requirements for how 
files have their access controls set so their public authority or their owner's authority and so forth. So we allow you to define exactly how you want something to be secured. Then we allow you to check these policies. So when you run a check, it compares the current settings of your system against what you have defined in your policy. And the result is that the setting is either in compliance, meaning it matches, or it is non-compliant, meaning it does not match. And obviously, when you are, the thing that you will be the most concerned about is when the settings don't match. So then we allow you to, if you want to, to allow the product to fix the policy, meaning it will set the actual value on the system to match the policy. So this way you can be assured of having your system set exactly the way that you want all of the time. You do not have to use the fix it function but it is something that uh, some of our customers use all of the time to make sure that things stay set the way that they want them to. Now the output and the way that most people use PolicyMinder is to review the reports. So the checks are scheduled once you define your policies the checks are scheduled, and those are done either in a job scheduler on IBM I or in AIX we have an integrated job scheduler. So those are scheduled on a regular basis. So some things you might want to check daily, like maybe you want to check if your system values have been changed daily, or maybe you want to know if a new administrator profile has been created you might want to do that very often. But other things, maybe it's okay to check once a week or once a month. It is totally up to you how often you check your policies. So the output of the policy is usually a report. And that report can either be in a PDF format or a CSV, a spreadsheet. By default, the report will only show items that are non-compliant, meaning those items that do not match. We want you to see a report so that if something is on the report, you know that you have to take action. But if everything is compliant, meaning that everything matches, you get an indication that everything is okay and then you know that you don't have to do anything more. So if it's on the report, you take action. If, it's, if nothing is on the report, everything is okay. We don't want you pouring through a list of every profile on your system to determine if it matches or not. So we, by default, only show the things that don't match. Now these reports can be emailed off the system to either one person or to many people. So again, you don't have to go to the system to look for the results. They can be emailed directly to you. And the reports are evidence to your auditors that you are checking your policies. In other words, you are making sure your system matches your requirements and that you are doing that on a regular basis. If any of you have to be in compliance with PCI, the Payment Card Industry Data Security Standards, one of the requirements of PCI is that you show proof that you are checking your policies on a regular basis to show that your system is in compliance on a regular basis, and these reports are proof that you are doing that. So we actually have two products under the brand of PolicyMinder. One is PolicyMinder for I, and that 
no surprise here, runs on IBM I. The other product is PolicyMinder, and it runs, and you can check the compliance for settings on AIX, Linux, and Windows. Now, on PolicyMinder for I, the entire product is installed on each partition that you want to run the product on. In PolicyMinder, it's a bit of a different architecture. So you have a console. That console can run on Windows. In fact, you'll see that I am running my console off of my laptop. So I run a console, and then I reach out using agentless technology to each one of the servers that I want to manage. So it's a slightly different technology. With both products, we provide uh, best practices. So you have an example right away as to what we would recommend that you check. But you can either use our, our recommendations, you can modify your recommendations to meet your requirements, or you can create your own. It is your choice. So what does PolicyMinder cover? Well, PolicyMinder for I allows you to set policies for system values. So, for example, um, you may look at our security best practices for system values, but in many cases, you may not be able to meet the best practices. That's okay. You can set your policy to meet your values that are approved by your organization. And then the, the check that you run will make sure it matches your requirements. So we allow you to set the values to meet your requirements, whether they meet best practices or not. It's important that we allow you to make these reports meet your requirements, and we've done that for both sets of products. So you can do system values, you can look at user profiles, you can look at the authority settings for libraries and the authority settings for objects in libraries like programs, files, whatever is in a library. And when I say that, I mean you can look at the ownership, the public authority, the authorization list, private authorities, and more. You can do the same thing for directories and objects in directories. You can look for the file shares that have been defined on your system, the authorities to authorization lists, and so on. Now, on PolicyMinder, uh, because it covers AIX and Linux and Windows, you are going to see different settings there. It wouldn't make any sense in PolicyMinder to cover the same exact things that PolicyMinder for I does because the architecture is different on those operating systems. So we have very carefully looked at the categories that you can set policies for, and we uh, make those make sense for the operating system that you're looking at. So you'll see that there are slight differences when I get into the demo. You'll see that there are differences, and those settings make sense for AIX or Linux, um, but they would probably not make sense on IBM I. So we make sure that it makes sense and you can set the values that, again, meet your requirements for those particular operating systems. So we look at configuration settings, which are global values. Uh, we look at the user account settings, the file configuration, because on those operating systems, everything is a file. So again, you can look at the authority of the owner, the group, the other authority. Uh, you can look at... Um, the exported directories, and daemons. Now, you see that it is a shorter list for PolicyMinder than PolicyMinder for I, but really it is not, and that's because of that last category called scripts. So if you are familiar with AIX or Linux, you know that many administrators administrators will do a lot of configuration checking and a lot of their work through scripts. 
Well, the very powerful function of PolicyMinder allows you to import a script and run that on a regular basis and use that as a customized policy. And it is integrated into the scheduling and it is integrated into the reporting of the product. So if you are doing work through scripts, you can import those into this product and continue to use those. All right, so let me get into a demo here. So I'm going to go to the IBM I product first. Now I'm showing you a green screen version, but it is also available in a web browser view as well. So you can do the exact same thing in a GUI interface as you can through the green screen interface. So I'm on the Policy Minder main menu for IBM I. So I'm going to take option one to work with the policies. And you can see here are all of the categories that we work with on Policy Minder for I. So I'm going to go into the user profile category. Now we already have some predefined, we call them templates, but those are those policies. So in this case, I am going to check for default passwords. I'm just going to go into that policy. So the first thing that you do when you define a policy is you have to tell PolicyMinder what you want to look at. So I'm, in this case, going to look at all user profiles. But I could look at user profiles in several different ways. I'm going to press 4 on the type field. And you can see I can look at profiles by their name, accounting code, the number of days they're inactive, the members of a group, limited capability, password, special authorities, and more. So I'm looking, in this case, at all user profiles. The next thing I tell PolicyMinder is, what is it about those profiles I want to check? In other words, what is my policy that I am defining? So in this case, I, I have pressed enter, I go to the next page. I could be telling PolicyMinder to look at the group profiles, the supplemental groups, the special authorities, I'm going to page down again. But in this case, I am looking at the password. And so I am saying that no profiles should have a default password. And here's the other things that I could be checking. So I've done that for a number of different types of, of configurations. One thing that a lot of people will use uh, PolicyMinder for in the user profile category is to find profiles that uh, have all logic that didn't have it before. So rather than comparing a listing or a spreadsheet of profiles and their, and their special authorities, you can do that with PolicyMinder. So I have included, this I as include, I can also omit if I want to. But in this case, I have included all of these profiles that currently have all object. And what I've done is to take advantage of this policy that says new profile allowed. This allows me to create a baseline to get the first set of profiles that have that all object. So you can see, I'm going backwards, that I'm basically looking at any profile that has all object. All right. Now let's look at what happens once I have run a compliance check. So I can run a check using the check command. And when I do that, I can uh, do this for an entire category or an individual template. And this is where I get my granularity when I want to schedule. So perhaps I want to look for uh, profiles with a default password every day. I would schedule this check command in my job scheduler to run daily. And then I can send it to myself if I want to. And that's what I would put in my job scheduler. 
So this is going out and it is checking all of those different policies that I ran uh, that I have already defined. Okay, so you can see that non-compliant items were found. So something about what I was checking did not match. All right, so I need to clear this out. And I'll take a look at what did not match. So I'm working with compliance, so this is the result of what happened. So you can see I have some many things that are out of compliance. So here is that default password. And I have several profiles that have a default password. Now let's just look at the non-compliant. I can filter this. Okay, so all of these have a default password. And I know this, here's my policy in the middle, and here's my default. It's highlighted because it's out of compliance. So that's just one example. Now I said you can do detailed policies for your authority settings in your libraries and directories. How would I do that? Let's go into work with policies. I'll go into my library category. And I have defined a template or a policy that is for my finance libraries. So you can see here I've used a generic. So this will pull in any library that begins with the letters F-I-N. Maybe I have a test library that is finance test that I would want to omit. So I can take advantage of this to filter and just get exactly what I want to look at. Now, at my library level, I'm going to say that the owner of these libraries should be Q Programmer. And I'm saying that the public authority should be all. Now, that is a very bad policy, so let's change that. I'm going to say that it's going to be exclude. All right? Now, if I just wanted to look at the libraries themselves, I would be done. But I actually want to look at the objects in the libraries. And so I've created these things called an object template. So I can come in here and display this. I'll show you how I've defined it. I'm looking at programs and service programs. I'm saying that they should be owned by QSEC Offer and be public use authority. And then the files, I'm choosing my logical and physical files, omitting my source files. And again, I have a, an interesting owner there. Let's make that key programmer, public exclude. Okay, and then my catch-all. So this is basically everything else in the library. Now, once again, I can run a compliance check. Now, if I want to, I can run this compliance check interactively like this. So now it's checking any library that begins with the letters F-I-N and any programs in those libraries and any files in those libraries. So what was the result? Okay, at the library level itself, hmm. Okay, so in the middle is my policy. This is what it's supposed to be. And anything highlighted does not match my policy. So it's owned by a different owner, and it is a different public authority. Okay. And then when I look at the objects in the libraries, I can see, again, that the owner is uh, not what I said it was supposed to be. So this is a case where if I wanted to, I could come into the policy and enable fix it. So I have uh, done that already. It does not get enabled automatically. But if I wanted to, I could run the fix it command. If I ran this, this would actually change all of the ownership, the public authority, authorization lists, and so on. If I want to see what's going to change but not actually change, 
I can run it in test mode and that will tell me what will change. Just to give you an idea of what this report looks like, remember we had a report that we wanted to look for profiles with the default password. This is an example of the PDF that comes out for that. Um, I checked all of the user profile settings. In this case, the summary tells me that uh, most things are non-compliant. So we have various things to look at. So this is one of the profiles that has a default password. And you can see that that one parameter that does not match, because my policy said no default, and it has a default password, you can see it's highlighted. Okay, so that's policy minder for I. And again, I've been showing you um, uh, I have been showing you the green screen version, but it is also available in a web browser GUI. Okay, so let's go over to the policy minder uh, for AIX Linux and Windows. So this is the view. Oh, I timed out here. Uh, the right user here. Okay, so I just have a very simple example here. I'm showing you one AIX server and one Linux server, uh, but you can have many, 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 many servers defined, and usually when you are running Linux or AIX, you have many servers defined. So I'm just showing you very clearly a very simple um, way to do this. I have my AIX server. These are the categories, user, files, um, the configuration settings, exported directories, daemons, and, and scripts. So if we go into the user category, again, uh, I just took advantage of the best practices templates that we have that we provide with this product, and I have imported those, and I ran a compliance check. So again, how would I run a compliance check on this? Well, I, a couple different ways. I can just click here and click here, and I now will run a compliance check on all things. But let's take a look at this. Again, remember I said that because this is AIX and Linux, it's going to check different things than it would on IBM I. So in the Unix world, it's very important that the UID not be duplicate. That would mean that two people are sharing the same, basically the same profile. So this looks for duplicate UIDs. So I need to select again which user accounts I'm going to look at. So I have a drop down that shows me how I can look at those. So I can do it again by username, primary group, group member, whether it's an admin account as defined in AIX, a number of days inactive, day since password change, UID. Here's my non-unique ID, which is what I did here. And then my policy says uh, that none are allowed. So we don't want duplicate uh, UIDs. And in this case, uh, we did not have any, so we're good there. Okay, so I think we had one, let's see, UID not equal to zero. Okay, so again, root is the UID of zero, so that's your super user. We don't want anybody else to be looking like a super user, so we don't want anybody else to have a UID of zero. So my policy in this case is uh, none allowed. If we look at the compliance, um, there is root, who is a UID of zero, of course, but there are no other accounts listed. So this is a good thing. So again, there's many ways that you can look at the user accounts on Linux and, you, and AIX. Again, these are the best practices that you can take advantage of or you can create your own. So some of the other categories, again, we have files. So again, we have a number of uh, predefined policies or templates that you can look at. 
Uh, one of the ones, let's see, we have is, this is where we have files owned by root. So in this, in this example, it's similar to uh, programs adopting QSEC offer, all right? So again, we have a selection tab that tells PolicyMinder what you want to examine. So in this case, we're looking at files uh, owned by root, okay? And again, we're not supposed to have any of those. So when we ran a compliance check, we found that there were some that existed. And so this is the path name of those files that are owned by root. And look at that, and it will show that it is uh, one of those files. And again, you can create a new policy. We'll close this one. If I wanted to create a new policy for my files, I have a number of things that I can uh, uh, define this as. A new policy for a demo. And I'll just say I want to check everything in the home directory. Okay, and you can say whether or not you process the subdirectories. This notes section is very handy. It's available both in this product and policy minor for I, and it prints out when you print the policy. So a lot of people will use this to define why you're defining this policy. So this is used to check uh, corporate uh, policy section 12.5. Or some people will use it to say uh, when it was created and why it was created. So you can use this for a variety of things, but it's quite handy. Then I need to say, so I'm looking at the home directory. I want to look at the files. I'm going to say that, uh, oh, let's see, the owner Yes, I'm going to check the owner, and it should be CJW. There probably aren't any, and we'll say uh, none allowed. But if we don't want to do that, we can say things like, here's who should own the file. Here are the permissions on the file. Um, the type field, so whether or not uh, the set UID, set GIDs, and the sticky bits are set. And here's a unique uh, version of this product where you can monitor. So if I monitor the all of the files in the home directory and I say I want to monitor the owner, the group, the permissions, and the checksum, so in this case, what I'm doing is saying, I want to know if there's any changes to any of these files. So if I save this and run a compliance check, it's basically going to gather all of the settings that I just checked to monitor. And then if anything changes between now and the next time I check it, it would be out of compliance. Again, it's a simple way to know if something has changed. So other things that people do, uh, a lot of times people have what they call a golden master, especially for uh, AIX and Linux instances. And a lot of times it has to do with whether or not daemons, those TCP IP services, are started or stopped, uh, and the configuration settings and whether they are started or stopped. So what you can do is take this value and say whether or not it should be started or stopped and apply it to other servers in your network. So I would do that through uh, my export function. And I'm going to select this server, the one I'm working on, and the policies that I want to do right now is daemons. And I can just export this to another file. If I had other servers defined for AIX, 
I could automatically apply those uh, settings to that server, and then what I would do is automatically run fix it, and that would make these settings that I'm working with right now apply to that new server instance. Now, one of the things we did not talk about in either product is something called initialize. So what we can do in both products is initialize certain policies, and basically that gets the current settings and brings those into the product. So that's what we did for the daemons in this case. We initialized it. So this is what is currently running on my AIX server. So if I see something here that I don't want to have running, uh, let's see, what, okay, is it safe to turn off and on? Just always have to look at that. Okay, this says it's prohibited. What, what if I say it's, uh, so we have three settings. Allowed says it's okay either way, whether it's on or off. Required says it must be running. Prohibited says it can't be. What if I say it's required, and then I run a compliance check on this? Ah, it comes back and says it's uh, out of compliance. Why is it out of compliance? Uh, because it's running and it's not supposed to be. So I'm going to enable fix it, and I'm going to say fix it now, and so it will actually turn it on. All right, so now it's actually active before it was not active. So that's something that you can do one by one, or you can do it for a whole category. Now, again, there's uh, reports that you can generate, and I said that there was an integrated uh, job scheduler. So if we take a look at that, uh, I have created a job previously that checks compliance for all, all categories. So uh, again, it's based on cron, and you can su select an example. I cannot remember the syntax of the cron jobs, so I just choose which one I want it to do. In this case, it would run the 15th of every month. I actually wanted it to run daily or uh, weekly, so it's, I chose this one. And then I say what I want it to run against. I want it to run against my AIX server. And the task that I wanted it to do was to check the user accounts. So everything about users will be checked every Monday morning. And then I'm going to email myself the report. I could, if I wanted to, add a task and say that I wanted to fix it as well. So that is another thing that we can do. And again, it can be scheduled. So. Um, that is a very quick demo of both of the products. I'm wondering if there are any questions that have come in. Thank you, Carol. And we are going to uh, receive it any, any question. We are going to give uh, maybe a couple of minutes uh, so they can send the, the questions in the, in the chat. And, and I, I'll be telling you if we have any questions. All right. So again, both products are very flexible, and both products allow you to be very detailed in how you define your policies. Que por favor utilicen el área del chat para hacernos llegar cualquier eh, pregunta. Okay, perdonen por este pequeño sonido que se, se metió. Y 
Carol, we have one question about the IBM I. Is possible to admin different partitions in a central console? Not at the moment. Um, you can, there's the feature to be able to export policies uh, and import them. And so most people will use one of the, the partitions as their primary partition, define their templates there, and import them to the other partitions. So that's how we allow you to manage it once and uh, not have to manage it on every partition. Okay. And also, uh, the, the interface is uh, also WebEx for the IBM I or just in green screen? No, there's a web browser and HT HTTP, a web browser version of PolicyMinder for I. Okay, perfect. And also you, you say that the, they, they uh, have included some uh, best practices. If they want to have compliance with PCI or, or SOX, is possible to set a policy minder to, uh, to help them with that? Yes, absolutely. Um, the best practices will help you uh, meet those requirements for PCI especially for things like um, system value settings, looking for powerful users, uh, looking for authority settings on files containing PCI uh, information. And again, just from the fact that you are checking your policies regularly is part of a requirement for PCI. So you schedule the checks on a regular basis, and uh, that will be help you meet PCI requirements. Um, I have the the PolicyMinder GUI up. If you want me to show you what that looks like, uh, yes, I think. Um, let me give you give you the the. Okay, I. I transfer the control to you. You can share your screen. Okay, so here is the web browser view of uh, PolicyMinder. So these are the same templates that we had defined that I showed you in the green screen, but they are defined here in the GUI as well. Same thing with the library authorities. And then we can drill into this and show uh, what that looks like. So you can do the same thing through the browser as you can through green screen. OK, that's, that's perfect. So I. I think that anyone can use the green screen or the web browser, whatever they they fit better with. with exactly. Their. Okay, that's perfect. And let me see. I think we are receiving another question. Okay. I think we. We don't have any any other question for for now, uh, Carl. Thanks so much for your help. You're welcome. And we will be in touch in another webex. All right, that sounds perfect. Thank you for joining me. Okay, thank thanks you for Carol. the invitation. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> bueno, muchas gracias. Esto es eh, todo por el día de hoy. Les recuerdo que tenemos eh, la prueba de 30 días de Policy Minder. Nos vamos a poner en contacto con, con ustedes precisamente para realizar esta, esta prueba. Eh, mi nombre es Pablo López y quedo a, a sus órdenes y nos estamos escuchando en un próximo webex. Hasta luego.